<laughs> yes. If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, everybody is. It's sweeping the nation because we're the janitor of podcasts. But only real fans, true hardcore fans who have been with us since the beginning, only they would know two facts about the both of us, two undeniable, really real, and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us, America's hottest podcasting couple, Bonnie and Steve. First and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that when you are not doing the podcast, you work with homeless people, which is very nice of you. Yes. You such a giving heart. Can you explain to us what it is you do with homeless people? Um, Bunny, are you there? Well, I feel yeah, you you kind of locked okay. up there for a little bit. No, I can hear covered. you. Uh, I I feel that one of the things that is homelessness is a big problem. Okay, and yeah, it has to be it has to be looked at and come at from different angles. And I feel that that homeless people. Like, one of the things that isn't talked about much is that it's really boring being fucking homeless. Yeah. It's boring. Yeah, very So, so yeah. I, I try to get them interested in collectible Matchbox cars. Nice. Nice. You know, yes. Uh, people throw them out. I mean, you're yeah. looking for a sandwich anyway. You find a little toy dump truck, you know? And some of them have managed to amass quite a nice collection. Yeah, that's, that's hours of fun. Of collectible, of collectible Matchbox cars. I love that. I love that. You're really, you're, you're helping people. I, I hope you're so. You're giving of yourself. I, I, yeah. I hope so. I, I, but, you I know, really, anything that could give a smile, you know, really appreciate what put you... a smile on somebody's face. Yeah, and I like that. I like that. Matchbox cars. And the second thing that you would know about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So what I like to do at this part of the show is I like to tell a story from history, maybe one that people don't know too well, and reword it via my own unique storytelling razzmatazz. And that's what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of... Steve's Historic Approximations! Dun, 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 dun. Or SHAP, as I like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Personally, I like the name SHAP. It's short, but fun, and it's very effective. It's the Don Knotts of podcast segments. And speaking of Don Knotts... This shaft that we are about to do, it was a request from the fan base, from the fans out there, because let me tell you, as in you, the listener, yes, we did get all of your messages and your calls, your letters, your texts. The response was overwhelming. These past two weeks have been insane for us here at the Pope on Film headquarters. So many fans have requested that we do this shaft, and now... Finally, after so much pressure from society, yes, today's chap is about actor Norman Fell. Okay. Finally, all of the no hardcore Norman <coughs> Fell fan base out there who demanded an all Norman Fell chap can finally get off our fucking dick. Yeah. Jeez. God damn. Bunny, what would you call hardcore... Uh, what would you call the hardcore Norman Fell fan base out there? What would, what would Norman Fell fans call themselves? Uh, I, I think they, they would call themselves uh, felons. You kind of locked up there. 
Yeah. Okay. Should be good now? Yes? Okay. I think we're good now. I would I would call them felons. So when you're talking about the Norman Ooh, fell... Ooh, that's really good, because I have a small fell list. Fan fell base, heads, you're maniac. talking about the hardcore, the hardcore felons. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I had fell heads, Normaniacs, and Mr. Robinians. But, oh, felons. That's perfect. Norman felons. Yeah. Anyway, Bunny, you probably know this story. You probably know the shaft that we're about to do. But you know who doesn't know this story? The new generation. The kids. The teens out there. The young people. So we gotta educate. We gotta educate. We gotta let the new generation know the strange stories of the past. We gotta do it for the culture. To educate people on how Norman Fell got fucking screwed. Okay. So, Norman Fell, character actor, extraordinaire, and, fun fact, World War II veteran. He was a tail gunner in the Air Force during old WWII. And being shot down is one thing. Being shot down by Mr. Roper, though, that's some next level shit. Yes. And it's all, it's not surprising that Norman Fell, character actor extraordinaire, was also in World War II, because out of all the actors that you see on TV, that you see in a sitcom, you can kind of tell that Norman Fell had seen some shit. Yeah. In whatever he did, Norman Fell seemed like the type of actor who has seen some shit. So after fighting in World War II, he studied acting and started getting bit parts here and there, He had an incredible career doing small bit parts in an insane amount of fucking movies and TV shows. Including, but not limited to, small parts in the following. Perry Mason, Ocean's Eleven, The Lives and Loves of Dobie Gillis. It's a mad, 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 mad world. The Alfred Hitchcock Hour, Dr. Kildare, The Fugitive, Wild Wild West, Man from Uncle, Bewitch, I Spy, Mannix, Motherfucker was in The Graduate. Yeah. Norman Fell, real name Norman Feld with a D. Uh, He made a very successful career out of small bit parts in essentially everything. The list continues. Partridge Family, Love American Style, McLeod, Marcus Welby, Airplane 75, Rhoda, Starsky and Hutch, The Bionic Woman, The Streets of San Francisco, Grizzly Adams, Charlie's Angels, The Love Boat. He was even in Roots to Get Rootsier. Basically, Norman Fell's career was a look at what was popular throughout the entirety of the 60s and fucking 70s. Yes. If you want to know the popular shows in the late 50s and throughout the entire 60s and the 70s, all you have to do is look up Norman Fell fucking IMDB because he was everywhere in fucking everything. Yeah. Shit. And then what happened to Norman Fell? Jack Tripper done fucked him. (laughs) That's what happened. Jack okay. Tripper and Don Knotts done fuck Norman Fell right over. Okay, how so? And this, uh, this, this upsets me. Okay, so in 1976, the sitcom 3's Company premieres. And Bonnie, can you explain to the audience, for the young people, the kids, the teens, the, for the culture... The plot of Three's Company, which I fully believe is something you can never get away with now. Can you explain the plot of the sitcom Three's Company, the beloved sitcom Three's Company for me, please? Okay, so uh, Jack Tripper, played by John Ritter, needed a place to stay. So he had two friends who were girls 
who had room in their apartment, so he decided to stay there. But the landlord would be uncomfortable with a straight man being with in the same place with two women, so he had to pretend he was gay. Yeah, that's the plot of a beloved sitcom that ran through the 70s and 80s. It was horny man pretends to be gay. Shit. You know, like... Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was the plot, and in the show... Norman Fell was the landlord, and he's it's cranky. Like, but, but, and he, but hold on, let's stop there a second. Let's yeah, let's yeah, stay there yeah. for just a little bit longer, because it's almost yeah. like you want to say something. It's almost like you want to make some kind of social commentary for your times, but you just can't fucking do it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like they yeah. wanted to say something. Like, they wanted to say something about different types of relationships or, or homosexuality or, you know, things of... The, and they just couldn't. Like, they had, a, they had a backpedal on things, you know? It just, like, feels like they came so close to saying something and then steered it the other way. Yep, and then they never did. And yeah. then they never did. Yeah. Pamela Barnes was one of those people I had a crush on yeah. as a child, and then that I completely forgot. Yeah, yeah. Pamela Barnes yeah. was one of those people. More so than the one that she replaced. I don't know why, Yeah, but Pamela well, Barnes a- did it for me as a young child more than... Suzanne yeah. Summers. There you go. This was like a weird yeah. kind of period of my life where where I, I would just wind up like I would no longer watch Charlie's Angels or I would no longer watch Three's Company or anything like that because I was just fucking growing up. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. I never saw a single episode of the A Team. Never saw a single episode of Knight Rider. Never saw a single episode of uh, Miami Vice. Yeah. So like, like so like, when these that. shows first came on, I was entering puberty, where Charlie's Angels and Three's yeah. Company and everything was quite nice to have around. But by the time these shows were canceled, I was fucking working. <laughs> I had a job. Yeah. I couldn't watch them anymore because yeah. I was working. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So in Three's Company, which you absolutely could not do now, uh, Norman Fell played the landlord, and he's cranky, and he's funny, and people loved him, and they loved his wife, who was played by actress Audra Lindley. The two were very... The two were very popular on the show, a very popular show. So much so that um, Jack Tripper's horny friend who always wants to go to the bar, the Regal Beagle. Yes. I don't remember his name, but he was supposed to be in just one episode, but he was so popular that the writers went, okay, I guess we'll have a sitcom with a wacky neighbor. Never really been done before. But hey, I guess we'll be the first. And that's how we got Agatha Harkness. Yay! Yes. It all ties together. So, um, Norman Fell as the landlord, Mr. Roper, was so popular. So really popular. Incredibly popular. Everyone knew who Norman Fell was. He was the wacky landlord who kept thinking that Jack Tripper was gay and not a horny straight guy. And people loved him so much. He was the real breakout of the show. As they said in Man on the Moon, uh, Norman Fell was, was almost the Fonz of the show. Yes. Breakout, the guy on the lunchbox. So it, they were so popular. They were so popular. Mr. Roper was so popular that they fired him. Yeah. So let me explain. 
There's the Ropers were so popular on Three's Company that the studio had an idea. What if? Hear me out here. <coughs> this is a great idea that will never fail. But what if this sitcom gets a spinoff? Yeah. We call it the Ropers. You guys are so popular in Three's Company that the show The Ropers will undoubtedly be a rating smash. So how about we write Mr. Roper off the show, give you your own show, it'll be super popular. What do you think about that? And to his credit, uh, Norman Fell said, fucking no. (laughs) I'm on a super popular show. Just leave it as it is. I don't want a spinoff. I don't want my own show. I'm great on this show. Just keep me on Three's Company. But you know who did it? It was Audra Lindley. If you watch the credits of The Ropers, and I have watched it a million times this week, Audra Lindley, Mr. Roper's wife, gets the top billing. Really? Norman fell. Mr. Roper's wife is the first one in the credits. Followed by Norman Fell. I love the credits of the Ropers. I don't think I've ever watched an episode of the Ropers, but this week, and I'm being serious, I think I've watched the opening credits of To the Ropers about 20 times. I said it was for the podcast, but really just there's something about it. The music is kind of vaudevillian, kind of sticky, yeah. you know? Like, wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 and, You know, kind of like Krusty the Clownish. And and all of the characters show up and they're dancing in front of the of like a blank slate. Just going like, oh, here you go. Yeah. Oh, look at me. I'm a tennis pro. That's why I have a tennis rag, racket. Look at me. I'm the precocious child. I have a ball. I have bounced it. Now you need to know everything you need to know about this show. Jeffrey Tambor is in it. And even though it's 1979, he is still a balding middle-aged man. So I have come to the conclusion that actor Jeffrey Tambor was born a fucking boss baby. He was born a balding baby in a suit. He came out in a suit. And has just been a balding businessman for his entire life. But now, now, since you brought up Precocious Child, okay, I, I would like to mention the, the slender man that nobody is actually talking about. And that is... Spotting Corey Feldman in in failed TV series. Yeah, he okay. was like the precocious child yeah. in at least three failed '70s shows around the time yeah. of the Ropers. Yeah, it's always interesting to see actors when they were precocious children. I remember growing up watching some sitcom, some dramedy with Wilford Brimley and a very young Shannon Doherty. Yes. I she don't remember to be that an astronaut. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. 100% yeah. remember that. I remember Julia Louis Dreyfus in a sitcom way before Seinfeld. And it was in the like late 80s. And she was a businesswoman, and she was serious. And and so, yeah, when I saw uh, Seinfeld, I'm like, shit, yeah, that's, she was from SNL, and that one show, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fucking sitcoms get me, but, but, uh, so here's how it happened. Here's how it happened. Norman Fell didn't want his own spin-off, but so many people just bugged and bugged and bugged, so eventually he's like, fine. I'll be on. I'll be on the show, and so season three of Three's Company ended with Norman Fell leaving. I am moving. I am selling this complex, so I will not be your landlord anymore. It, it took it took Norman Fell six months to agree to be on the Ropers. 
because yeah. he one hundred percent didn't want to. So he so the third season he left the show, and he after the third season he left Three's Company and got his own spinoff. It was called The Ropers. It did eh in the ratings. It did last two seasons, and then it was canceled. So he said, "Okay, well." My spinoff was canceled. I guess I'm going back to Three's Company. No, you're fucking not, because now Don Knotts is in your role, and people love him more than you. (laughs) Don Knotts fucked over. It's not his fault. I know it's not his fault, but Norman Fell was popular, and they replaced him with Don Knotts, so of course that's going to be twice as popular. It's Don fucking Knotts. Yeah. And he was so popular that, so essentially, Norman Fells, Mr. Roper, was so popular that he was fired from the show. Oh, yeah. And wasn't allowed to come back, because now you got Don Knotts, you can't have Mr. Roper come back. Now Mr. Furley's here, and people love him a million times more. And so I was going to write this chap about, uh, fuck Don on knots for screwing over Norman Fell, but I heard a story that just oh broke my heart. He was scared shitless to do Three's Company. Yes, uh, Don Knotts was scared to fucking death because he had done movies before and he had done one sitcom and it was a one camera sitcom without an audience where he was just by himself and suddenly he's in front of a live studio audience doing a three camera sitcom and he's like I've never done this before I'm super fucking scared I'm fucking going out of my fucking mind somebody give me a, pl- a, a brown paper bag to fucking breathe in I'm fucking losing it over over here i can't do it so when he first went out on on stage on the set as mr furley uh they had to redo it because the first time he came out the entire studio audience and everyone in the crew gave him a 10 minute long standing ovation nice made him feel better about doing a a modern day 70s 80s sitcom and calmed him down to be able to do this and so yeah it's not don knotts's fault but uh don knotts was so popular that they couldn't fire him and bring back the original guy so norman fell and mr roper dunn got fucked over yeah but apparently uh, Norman Fell wasn't negative about it. He wasn't angry about it. And up until his death, if you saw Norman Fell walking down the street and said, hey, it's fucking Mr. Roper. Mr. Roper, hi. He would turn around with a smile on his face, greet you, shake your hand, give you an autograph, take a picture with you. No fucking problem. He was fine with being Mr. Roper and being screwed over by Three's Company. I would have been fucking pissed. I would have burned down the goddamn set. Yeah. It would have hit on Don Knotts. But uh, Norman Fell, even though he was screwed over, took it like a goddamn champ. But it's sad what happened to Norman Fell. And I'm happy that we are here crusading for, for Norman Fell. And also, you should see the credits for The Ropers. Yeah. It's on YouTube. The theme song is just annoying and catchy. And uh, Mr. Roper is there with a plumber, like, dancing. Like, <laughs> yeah. so stupid that I love it. And I've been listening to it. Oh, I've been watching it on YouTube over and over again. I'm obsessed with the opening credits to The Ropers for some dumbass reason. But there you go. That was our shaft. Uh, Norman Fell deserves some goddamn appreciation. Yes. Who's a fucking graduate? Yeah. <laughs> That's Norman Fell. And I'm happy that we uh, are, are uh, coming to his defense. Because if we won't, who the hell else will? Yes, this is true. There you go. Be sure and join us next week for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve's Historic Approximations. And cut on that.